when you flip something over, the first thing that you're gonna see is the shapes that you didn't get correct. Hey everybody, wildlife artist Ryan Kirby here. And today we get asked a lot if um, I'll show my process and how I do my sketches. So today we're gonna dive in and sketch an owl. Just real quick, start to finish here so you can see a little bit how I start and the things that I go through to produce a sketch. So when I start a piece, <clears throat> one thing that I've always felt like is important is I'm right-handed. So in st as a, as a right-hander, it's easy for me to rest the the edge of my hand here, the part of my wrist, on the paper and go like this. It's an easy movement for me to control and make accurate, where if I start with an angle at this direction, I've gotta move my whole arm to make that, but with a right-handed one, I can rest here and pivot. So I always like to make my first mark something at this sort of an angle so I know I can get it down right and then go from there. So for this owl, I'm probably gonna cut through these feathers here and make that mark here. So we're gonna dive in and I'll just, I'll just show you a few things that I like to do and work for me as we go. Um, my best sketches are probably gonna be about the size of my fist. Um, anything larger and I'm gonna get too much detail, too complicated. Anything smaller, I can't get enough detail. So the first mark is gonna help proportionally set the tone for the rest of this piece. I'm gonna find this angle right here, and then I'm gonna go up here and sort of start getting some of the boundaries in. So this owl has some pretty, you know, distinct markings um, and shapes. So when I look here, there's almost a perfect horizontal here that comes from here to here and here to here and has an X right at the top of his beak. Now, not a lot of wildlife is gonna have that perfect starting point like this guy does, but he's got it. So we're gonna come in here, start identifying some of these shapes. We're gonna stay really loose and really, they call it, you know, gestural on the outside. And that's gonna give this piece a little bit of character as we go. You can always tighten up detail. You can't always, can't always make something loose once it's gotten too detailed. Now, one important thing to note is to look at the curvature here. Now, I said earlier that this is a perfect horizontal. It's really not when you look at it. There's a nice little curve to it that gives this owl sort of an aggressive look. We wanna make sure we get that right. Now, <clears throat> One thing that I also try to do is turn the piece upside down. So I'll do the same with my sketch. We talked about being right-handed before, and because of that, I have a natural tendency to do a little bit of a right-hand lean um, where my my drawings are kind of skewed a certain way because I'm just naturally bent towards that. So when you flip something over, the first thing that you're gonna see is the shapes that you didn't get correct. So right here, I can see that the beak in my drawing isn't quite centered. I need to fix that. Add some of the feathers in here, in the bottom beak. And I'm gonna start identifying some of these shapes 
and get them proportional, proportionate. Now, once I have, you notice everything I'm doing here is really light. I won't lay down any dark marks at this point until I know I've got it accurate. And the reality is I feel like the most important work that I do on any sketch is upside down because it gives you a fresh perspective. And one thing I'm looking at here is that these eyes appear to be perfect circles, but they're really not. This is way more of an egg shape and there's some straight lines in here that are coming to form the inner part of that eye. So when I go to render those, I need to draw in more of a mark that is a straight line rather than a circle. Those are really important details you gotta get right. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time. Because it doesn't matter how well you, you draw something or proportion it, how, how well you detail it, if the if it's not proportionally correct, it's always going to look funny. So now we're going to start laying in some of these shapes. Even here, it appears at first glance that this is a perfectly, you know, half moon sort of shape. But you start getting into it, and there's different feathers laying on top of each other. It's never going to be a perfect shape. Another very, very, very subtle difference here, but at quick glance, it looks like the bird is facing straight on, but if you look, this shape here is more narrow than this shape here because the owl's head's turned a little bit. It's important to get that right too. Little things like that will make all the difference towards the end. We're starting to get there now. So now that we've got some of these in, we're gonna start laying in some of the darks. Now, one thing to note here, it looks like these horns here, whatever they call them, would be one big shape. And you may be tempted to draw them that way. But if you look, it's actually a series of feathers. So we're gonna layer this as such. And then what we can do when we actually go to draw these is you can draw them and you can shade them one individual feather at a time. That'll help give them some depth and set them apart a little bit. <clears throat> That's how I like to draw a lot of things, is, is outline the shape <clears throat> and then fill it in with shading. So like right here, I'm gonna focus on this. And rather than a bunch of different shapes and lines, I'm gonna draw one shape here, one shape here, and I'm gonna shade it this way. So, one here. Round it out. And again, we're gonna draw that sort of an egg shape. And again, I would never draw this dark until I feel like I've got it accurate. Because once you put that mark down, it's hard to get rid of. And then I'm just gonna shade this out. 
do like a grayscale shade job on the way out of that. And I've, I've, you know, read a lot and watched a lot and, you know, people think that art is some massive talent. There's, there's talent to it. I don't get me wrong, but, um, a lot of it is just identifying shapes and then learning how to render those. It just comes down to hand-eye coordination. So we've got a shape here that I've rendered. We've got a shape starting here. Well, we've got rendered. And then we've got a shape here that we've got rendered. And just, it really comes down to looking at these shapes, evaluating those and then shading them in. Now, when I look at this here, I see that the pupil right here and right here are the darkest parts on this entire owl's face. Beak isn't, these feathers aren't, so we're gonna keep all of our detail right there. Or all, all of our contrasts, all of our darkest darks are going to be right there. And then we're going to lay these feathers in. Just like that. Now, if you notice, this shape here is dark, this here is dark, this is light, and this is kind of a middle value. So we're just going to put a little bit of less pressure in. And right now, we're just going to render that as one shape. <clears throat> we'll probably come back to it in a little bit. But for not right now, we're going to leave it. And one thing that is is really important is when you're doing an area like this, the your your pencil marks need to go in the direction of the the feathers, the hide, the hair, whatever you're gonna do. And then I try to make my pencil marks the same length as the hairs in that area. So right here we have a bunch of little bitty stunted hairs. Right here we have some longer hairs. So when I wound over this area. I use some larger, larger pencil marks. When I get work in these areas here, I'm gonna go kind of rapid fire, a little bitty short stubby pencil marks. Another thing, um, I had an artist tell me one time that uh, he said variety, he was saying variety is the spice of life. And I think that's a saying we've heard before, but, um, in wildlife art, variety is is where your interest comes from. So it's tempting to render all these hairs perfectly in the same direction. But what I try to do like on this area right here is just break it up a little bit, add a little bit of variety. Even if you're just making that up and taking some artistic license as they like to call it, even if you're just doing that, Just put some variety in there. So you'll notice that I actually drew the shape of my highlight here. And it's such a distinct highlight that I feel like I can get away with that and actually draw it out and then shade around it. Rather than having to shade the whole rather than have to grade into that whole thing. So this is another area that's really dark. 
and anywhere that you have a dark and light button up against each other, it's gonna produce more contrast and it's gonna draw the viewer's attention more. <clears throat> so we're not quite sharp enough, I don't feel like on the beak, but we're gonna get there right here. And again, this is like a, it's a gradual process. You don't wanna lay down any real dark darks until you feel like you're there. Another really important tool for the artist is an eraser. And what I felt like was happening here is I was getting too much of a straight line. Very, very, very rarely is anything in nature gonna be a straight line. So we're starting to get pretty close here. <clears throat> um, having that eye done, I'm gonna go ahead and put a pupil in here. It's really important to note the size of it and the shape compared to everything else. Personally, I like to do this gradually. I don't like to, I don't like to commit to that important of a shape right off the bat. So I'm gonna sort of commit to it and then come back later. Let's take a break one second. Yeah. I like this angle. Good. It's a good cutaway angle. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, if the focus wasn't quite hitting on that or something or whatever the case could be, that's a good cutaway. We good? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to work on this eye over here. And again, it's not a perfect circle. It's going to be more of a egg shape. And it's always kind of interesting. You can make, if you don't get this part right, obviously the owl's gonna look bug-eyed anyway, but if you don't get it right on something like a deer or a turkey or anything like that, they can look like they're, you know, like lazy-eyed or looking off into a weird direction or something like that. So we're gonna do this mark here. Another little subtle trick that I do is, you know, obviously this area here is light, but you can just put a few little marks, like maybe three in a row, to show that those are actual feathers. Same thing here. It's almost like a little bit of a comic book rendering but I feel like it adds a little bit of character to it. And then this is the same thing here. We're gonna make one shape. We're gonna get the outline of that shape right. And then we're just gonna come in and shade it and grade it out. Again, there's some real small feathers in here, so we're gonna go light there. And we're gonna go small feathers, small pencil marks.
and it'll speed up a lot if I can render a shape without having to outline it like that. And we'll keep this loose. Now, one thing that we've got to figure out here is how do we want to render this area here? <clears throat> my tendency, I'm obviously, it's not really my style to render every feather. I like to maintain a little bit more loose than that, but it's important to note the way the feathers change here. And then what I will probably do is draw these out as shapes and then shade them in. So we'll come in here. We've got this kind of down mark here right here, and then I'll come in and find where I want to be, and I may just draw this whole whole thing out. So I just rendered real quick this shape here, and then I'll go in and I'll shade the whole thing as one shape. And then the same relatively in here. Go in and shade that whole shape. And slowly we'll just build out this owl's shape. And I would paint these in kind of the same way too. Except it's easier to get a little bit more texture when you've got paintbrush bristles. So now we got to figure out what we're going to do over here. And we need to show this as a, a plane that sort of recedes. Into the distance. Now that we're getting close, we need to really go back um, and finish up some detail up here. I'm really not interested in sketching every single part of this here. So I'm gonna pick one, two, three, four areas, and I'm just gonna draw those and layer those in. And again, variety is where Variety is where it's at here. So I've got two. If I would go in and lay those in in perfect, like a repeatable pattern, it just wouldn't look all that natural. And we want to help define this shape which is a curved shape. So now we're gonna go in and do that. And again, as this, as this shape rolls in, these feathers are probably the same color, but because this one's getting hit with light and this one's dark, as it rolls down, the dark stuff is gonna go real dark. 
and we're going to shade it lighter as we go, go towards the top. So right here is always kind of a hard part for me um, is doing the highlight in the eyes. And there's a, a pretty easy way to do it in that you just find, you just have to assume that there's a horizon line that this owl is looking into and below it is dark and above it is light and you can sort of leave a highlight there and grade uh, down into it um, where the this would be the horizon line in the pupil and the same for the eye, the eye in general. It's kind of difficult to sketch a little bit easier to paint because what you can do when you paint is you can render the whole thing and then pop a highlight on top of it. It's harder to sketch when you're drawing because you have to leave the highlight off of it and render the dark stuff around it. probably come back to that later and finish that up. flip it upside down. One of the things that flipping it upside down too does is it allows you access <clears throat> with your hand back to some places that the that it would smear otherwise. So that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this one. We're not gonna go into too much detail. Um, we're not gonna get crazy, too crazy on it. But as you can see here, that's that's really uh, my process <clears throat> and how to lay down a sketch really quick. Um, again, if I get too much larger than this, 
I've found it tends to go downhill for me and I have, I feel like I have to do too much detail, um, too much smaller than this and you don't have the opportunity to really get in there and do too much detail. So um, the biggest thing you've got to do if you're trying to get better is just keep at it. You really got to, to put in the time and, and put in the work if it's something you're going to try to get better at. And, and you really want to do because you're going to learn what works for you. A lot of this stuff, you know, it works for me, might not work for some other people, might not work for some artists that are way better than I am. It just, it works for me where I'm at. And so don't hesitate to get in there and just give it a shot. But hope you've enjoyed this video. We're going to put this up and probably pick up some paint here um, in a little bit, but this is how I sketch an owl.